Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO The Last of Europe, in which we're going to look at the Imperial Mercantile Consortium, in which it is, or it should be up here. The Imperial Mercantile Consortium, or IMC, is a state born of Taborski's Empire, the remnants of the massive Imperial corporations created to run the sectors of the HRE's economy. Due to its nature, the Mercantile Consortium is no longer capable of executing the brutal purges of Taborski's Empire, but the racial theories remain. A legion of <clears throat> unpaid laborers toils across the factories and plantations of the Mercantile Consortium as the officials of the former Imperial Corporation scramble to make deals with entities as far as Muscovy and Finland. Sounds like a great time. And we're led by a certain Nikolai Talberg. And we have, we have a lot of money, the corporate pillars. We lose political power, we get more resource efficiency gain, as well as fraying strings. Slightly, slightly more weekly stability, but the root of all evil. Forced into the rock below, alone in a sea of cathedral, factories, and guard towers, to the officers of the Kostrama Armaments Society. Under the high patronage of his imperial majesty, soon to be renamed Kostrama Armaments. Simple. Here, the highest industrial authorities and the regency had convinced Taborutsky to allow for the sole concession. A single mass of skyscrapers stripped clean, ooh, stripped clean, of the region's wasteful requirements and obsessions of Black Tower dominating an ashen gray landscape. Daddy Tabby's only request, a metal sculpture of Tsar Alexei, was slowly being dismantled by construction crew as 12 limousines slipped through the gates and entered the monolith. In the first hours of the morning, a cabal of the region sees industrial leaders entering reading room 25 in the top floor of the Kostroma office, flanked by a pair of guards and several emaciated servants. The bright light from the room's massive window was almost blinding against the dim light of the office interior. Through it, Consortium Chairman Nikolai Talberg, Talberg appeared as a specter, casting a long shadow onto the oblong table. The Talberg began to speak with a quiet gravity that forced the Consortium to take heed. Look out beyond the window and see what the rigid has given us that approaches greatness. A legion of chairs began to turn, though no one said a word, yet I see inefficiencies and errors, mistakes that allowed his dream to crumble, mistakes that brought us here, mistakes that we shall not repeat. From behind the president's frail form, billows of smoke spilled from a thousand wicked smokestacks as the Imperial Mercantile Consortium rose like a revenant from Russia's poison dirt. If you would open your folders... Cool. And we are a bunch of fascists here, and we also have, let's see, despotists, as well as some authoritarian democracy people. As well as, my apologies, my cat wanted to be let out of the room. We have conservative democracy, we have a very long name of liberal democrats, we have some authoritarian, so, authoritarian socialists as well. Cool. But open for business, my friends. There was no such thing as booming business in the remnants of the Regency, but the Consortium had at least hoped to construct a payoff facsimile. I was in Central Africa years before. There was This was the primary mission of the Consortium. Diplomacy! A never-ending hunt for foreign companies, foreign machinery, foreign dollars, yet plans for German investment died on the leaves as if one of Taborski's hideous vessels had overflown overhead and smited the earth itself. If only there were less ideologues on company boards, men who depended on FIBA Untermensch and fears to sleep at night. Those men, the so-called thinkers of the boardroom, always balked at the consortium. When they saw the pictures of the massive cathedral, smeared with filth and packeted with broken beings, they were afraid, despite every inclination, their minds could not help but focus on the faces of the workers, smeared with sweat and grime, wincing in anguish while hanging in defeat. A face which could be German. After the slideshow, when the slim and uptight and upright consortium representative walked to the head of the boardroom, the ideologues would silently beg for a justification, a reason, something to make it all okay. And the representative, unaware of the primal terror, would say nothing, but occasionally, a man of action, of discipline, would stare at the production line and not see a line of broken figures crackling and bending in endless toil. All he would focus on, all he could focus on, were the well-made, well-priced products between their hands, and that man would make all the difference. Let's take a look. Wow, we're really focusing on academic literacy. No research facilities, agriculture, poverty slowly getting worse. Industrial equipment is rapidly improving here. Of course, for a business, it must go on like that. Expertise is slowly, slowly going up. Um, professionalism and no nukes. Big sadness. A sublime proposal. Nikolai Talberg was aware of every, every error and terror. The nervous shake of his assistant as he opened a pilfered bottle of wine, the mild flicker in the lights, the flecks of dirt that stained Talberg's suit, the clutter on his desk, and the papers in the corners of his office. If he hadn't been awake for so long, he would think he was in a nightmare. His body demanded sleep. He had been up for far too long for his age, but this work, this would work. The chairman was certain of it. This was a deal that the consortium had been waiting for, even a week ago. 
German investment seemed like a dream. Even Talbot was surprised when he heard a mecha corporation was interested in an offer. Now two of our representatives sat in front of his desk, eyeing every detail and passing notes. Talbot raised a glass, a toast to industry. Talbot said as his assistant pulled his guest a drink. As crimson red flowed into two stained bottles and glasses, he thought in horror but just how, how rare wine of this quality had become after the regent. The last good bottle of wine in Russia poured in the months of German swine. Into the mouth of the German swine, I should say. For a moment or so, the representatives chatted among themselves, grinning and pointing Nikolai, or Nikolai. Well, certain they were laughing at him. He knew why they'd even attempt to make a deal, and it wasn't out of German kindness. It was violence. They were younger than him, stronger than him, bloodhounds in the hunt, ready to rip out his neck and bring their corpse to German masters. Finally, one spoke in broken Russian. This good wine, may we see? Talberg handed over the bottle, frustrated but willing to put up with anything. It was a Zweigelt, imported from Ulster some twenty years prior. The two paused. Aryan, of course. You are good Aryan Russians. And we have a deal for you. And of course, we would have 17 factories. That's not bad. It's mostly, mostly civilians. And it's actually very smart for them to actually build up more cities. Pretty nice. Oh. The best money can buy, though. Sturmbaumfeuer, Donner's truck sputtered and chugged as it pulled itself around the Vologda industrial zone, grinding the tire tracks into the mud. After all he had heard about the consortium, he felt a sting of disappointment. He'd never been into this camp before, but he'd seen it a hundred times. A decade ago, they called him Untermensch. Here, they called him Restricted Workers. Today, Dona hadn't brought his battalion. This was a private meeting purely to discuss finances, from what he had heard. The consortium was extremely generous. So long as they got what they needed, they'd give you what you wanted. No questions asked, a nice arrangement. Dona slowed his truck at the foot of the massive central station and pulled a silver watch from his jacket. It was a bit early. Dona pulled a cigarette from his other pocket and began to smoke. Puff, puff. A few minutes later, Dona noticed a pair of eyes staring back at him. A young, pale figure with sunken eyes and a concave belly had stopped his cart to observe the stranger. Stranger. A younger Dona would have crushed him. Now it would seem barely worth the effort. The Avafin SS had shown Dona every depravity he could try and left him numb. An intrusive thought reached Dona's mind. Perhaps the slave felt the same, but this was impossible. The slave had not traveled the world. The slave had not felt the heat of the African jungle or the glory of victory on the front line. The slave had done nothing and was given nothing. The Strombonfia was given everything he wanted. Dona checked his watch again. The meeting was close. He shot his gun to scare all the men off. He had business to attend to. A deal between... <clears throat> Devils. Not bad. Yep, my bad. If you'd like to read about Talibug, please go right ahead, but the eye of a needle. Alcohol pooled in Artemov's stomach, the remnant of a night of celebration. A year earlier, the man was a low-level employee ready for the slaughter, now just a step above the swine who toiled in consortium factories. However, at this point, he was a corporate liaison of the gawky gypsum factory. Facility. Only a corporate formality brought Otimov to these dingy tunnels. The men did a tour led by the foreman and a pack of guards, but shining gypsum trapped within the tunnel walls made Otim move and slip away from his handlers and peer into the tunnels. Gypsum made him lose his way. Beautiful, Otimov said to himself, staring at the web of gems among him. God, I knew the, I never knew the consortium made something this bad word beautiful. Otimov began to chuckle at the thought, his face glazed in a foolish grin. From deep in the darkness, another voice laughed and Turn, was someone else out there? Spinning around, a set of bloodshot eyes peered out of the darkness, draped in smog. A face, mouth open, appeared before Otomov, covered in emotions he could never hope to understand. Slowly, curiously, it moved towards the bureaucrat. A violation of company guidelines, Otomov moved to grab his pistol, but found him missing. A fatal mistake. Otomov's heart began to beat faster as his eyes circled the room. Now he was aware of how alone he really was and how many others hid in the darkness. A crowd was rising from the darkness, bony, crooked. Revenants, all burning with an intensity which Atomov could never know. Atomov attempted to turn back to find his guy, but only crashed to the ground. There was no one left to save him now. Fear, all that remained was fear. Hands began to stretch out of the darkness, grabbing at the liaison's ankles and covering his mouth. Atomov could not bear to scream to think silently, diligently. A swarm of hands gripped the liaison and pulled him into the unending darkness, never to return. We are trapped in the belly of this horrible machine, but if you enjoyed this video... Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we check out other warlords and have a good time. Thanks for watching, and have a great, great, rich rest of your day.